What is OpenStack by Michael Still. Michael is the uh, project technical lead for Nova, one of the two original OpenStack projects. He's also a former director of linux.conf.au, as well as being a generally okay kind of guy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Still. Thank you. Let's just give people a second to come in. Also, because if I stall a little, it won't look like the talk's too short. Wow, more people than I expected. So, before we get started, how many of you, you people have used OpenStack before? So, a couple. All right, cool, because really I want to talk to people who haven't. So, it's good that most of you haven't. All right, let's, so let's get started. So, th this is a talk about what OpenStack is. And, you know, normally when I do one of these talks, I'd start off by saying who I am and why I'm kind of a big deal and all of that kind of stuff. But the problem with doing that is that then I'd have to explain what all my job titles mean. And that's not the point of this talk. I feel like the OpenStack project is poor at explaining exa exactly what we do and the problem we're trying to solve. And so I'm going to just ask you to suspend disbelief. I'm just this guy named Michael who happened to show up on time and you're know, giving a talk. So like I said before, this talk is about what OpenStack is. And I feel like the OpenStack project explains itself poorly. Now, partially that's because it's a pretty complicated project, but it's also because we get lost in the weeds really quickly. You know, people will come along and we'll tell them about, you know, how many developers we have or what our code review process looks like or, you know, we have this cool continuous integration system that runs test clouds and a large number of them every day. But really, if you're a new user, you don't care about any of that stuff, right? You care about the problem we're trying to solve and whether or not we do that thing well or badly. So, you know, this talk is my attempt to kind of reboot that conversation, I guess. It's kind of prompted by the fact that I keep meeting people at conferences who say, I don't really know what OpenStack is, but I don't like it. And this, <laughs> this really confuses me, right? Like, you don't have to like my thing. I'm okay with that. But I think if you're going to not like something, you should probably know what it is first, right? Um, so, you know, try to bear with me. So OpenStack is an attempt to provide open source Python components to build clouds. So, you know, obviously I'm trying to compress it into seven words, so it's more complicated than that. These are the important concepts. We believe in open source and open governance. It's all, almost all written in Python. There's a little bit of JavaScript and shell or whatever, but it's almost all in Python. And these are building blocks. We don't necessarily expect you to use all of them. We do expect them to plug together well and that sort of thing. But that totally doesn't help either, right? Because what's a cloud? So cloud means different things to different people. So, you know, people talk about infrastructure as a service, which is, you know, I want, uh, I don't know, virtual machines and virtual networks and there's some storage and plug it all together for me. There's platforms as a service, which is, you know, App Engine or Cloud Foundry or whatever. I want to write my app on top of an API layer that, you know, hides the complexity. And then there's software as a service. I want, you know, a MySQL database, and I don't care where it runs or how backups work. I don't want an admin on it. I just want you to give me a thing that I can use. So the majority of OpenStack is about infrastructure as a service. So it's about delivering you compute resources, networks, and storage in a way where you don't really care where they came from. Now, you know it's a bad sign when someone has a slide with all the text kind of pushed at the top, because it's obviously more complicated than that. So first off, infrastructure as a service is about providing infrastructure behind APIs. So we have an API that provides you with compute resources, virtual machines, containers, physical machines, that sort of thing. We have another API that provides you with virtual networks. So if you boot, say, I don't know, three virtual machines, you should be given a network where your machines can talk, but other users can't see you. And those virtual networks can do things like firewalling and load balancing and all that kind of stuff as well. You probably also want storage. Uh, there are use cases for you know, virtual machines that have no storage at all, but they're rare. So you know, that might be in the form of virtual hard disks that last longer than your virtual machine. So maybe you, know, you have a disk and you bring up a virtual machine, you do some stuff to the disk, and then the virtual machine goes away, but the disk hangs around. And then there's object storage. So if I was writing an app where, I don't know, I've got an avatar for every user, then object storage is where I'd say, well, take this picture, shove it in this bucket, and one day later I'll ask for it back. So it's not 
you know, it's not hard disk-like. It's around, based around individual files and you know, getting and putting, basically. In order to build those services, we need to have some other stuff, right? So we need common libraries. We've got libraries that help us with logging or um, config file parsing, that sort of thing. And those libraries are written in a reasonably generic manner. We have like an official style for what these things look like, but there's no reason that other people couldn't pick up these libraries and use them. We needed authentication. Now, we could have plugged into other authentication systems, but if you're building a large cloud, you're probably going to need something with scoped tokens that scales and that sort of thing. So we have one of those. We need uh, a virtual machine template system. And I'm trying to avoid uh, the internal jargon for the project here. So it's not really a template. But you know, if you're going to boot a virtual machine, there's probably some sort of starting disk image that you have, you know, Ubuntu 1404 or something. And so you're, hey, you go, hey man, boot me one of these. And then you end up with a virtual machine that you can use. And you probably, well, users don't care, I imagine. Deployers of this software need metering as well. So they need to know how much of a resource a user consumed so they can bill for it. Now, we explicitly don't solve the billing problem because everybody's billing system is different, right? Some people use Oracle Financials or, you know, if you're a smaller ISP, it might be some hideous Perl thing that you won't fess up to. But, you know, so we provide metering. The user used this many CPU seconds or this much RAM for this period of time. And then we let you, you know, customize that so it plugs into your horrible thing we won't discuss. And then there's, you know, tools that users demand. A web UI. There's also a command line client. And they're just, you know, API clients. There's nothing magical about them. And people ask for service orchestration a lot too. So surface, service orchestration is where you have a config file and you say, let's pick on WordPress for a second, right? You say, I want a WordPress blog. So I've got a front end and I've got a database server and they have a private network so they can talk but no one else does. And my blog about cats is going to be super popular. So we'll have a load balancer so that when I have more front ends, it's all like super sweet. And you express that in a config file, and then you throw that config file at us in an API call, and we just do it. So uh, if you've used Amazon CloudFormation, it's much like that. There's also things that you know, big kids need. So you know, we have a documentation project. Uh, we have a QA team. And we have a series of tools to help you deploy the software because this software is intended to run on, you know, I think the smallest working cluster I've ever seen is five machines, but we also have people with 10,000 machines. So there's a bunch of tools around, you know, how do you deploy the software, how do you keep it up to date, that sort of thing. So for example, there's, um, you know, puppet recipes. Well, I guess puppet don't call them recipes, but you know, there's puppet modules and chef recipes. There's also, on a project, there's also a project that builds further automation around that, but you know, there's just deployment tools if you're a system admin. I've accidentally hit next. Um, there are things the project needs to function because it's hit a certain size. We have an internal infrastructure team that you know, builds our test systems and manages our website and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know why this is auto-advancing, but anyway. Um, and you know, there's a test harness so developers can run up an entire cloud on their laptop and make sure that it actually works. People also keep asking for software as a service. So, um, you know, it, it's weird that, you know, you'd bring up a virtual machine on a network with an IP and not have a DNS entry, for example. So we have one of those. Uh, people like Hadoop. So we have a system that helps you deploy Hadoop jobs on top of the cloud. Uh, there's a queuing system, because if you were going to write an application from scratch for a cloud, you'd probably do it in a queue-centric manner instead of you know, traditional client server distributed system stuff. Uh, and there's a key management system, which can be as simple as you know, my SSH keys to log into my various virtual machines. But we also intend, we haven't got there yet, to use it for things like um, cryptographically signing API requests and stuff like that, especially for our internal interfaces. And to be honest, I don't see at all how this is confusing. And I mean that sarcastically. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of projects, there's a lot of code, it's a complicated system. And I think that's one of our problems. We get lost in the weeds and we say, you know, oh, well, you know, if you want to run this thing, you need to install these 47 billion things. But fundamentally, what we're trying to do is provide bits you can use to build a cloud if you want. You don't have to run our metering tools, for instance. Yeah, I don't know what is happening. 
Uh, I'll press pause or something. I think foolishly when I practice it, I said record the slide timings. So it now believes it should auto advance whenever it thinks I'm ready, which is not the most helpful thing ever. Um, so I don't know, just bear with me. I don't want to fiddle with my laptop instead of talking. OpenStack people also become obsessed with numbers, I think, because the numbers are big and that makes us cool. So we have 375 Git repositories when I counted yesterday. They're spread across 19 programs, a program being a thing that owns projects. Uh, and, you know, some of these Git repositories are in inside programs, but not all of them. It's doing it again. Stop it. Uh, and, you know, like, Sorry, I've lost my place now. And I think we quote these numbers because we're trying to explain why we're essentially incoherent, right? So it's hard to explain how a group of 4,000 developers believe anything consistently, right? It's like this conference, right? Presumably we all believe in Python, but some of us are Windows people and some of us are running you know, freer operating systems or whatever. So we've got to kind of pick on the high-level stuff. We all believe that Python is cool. So, you know, OpenStack people all believe that cloud is cool, but we don't necessarily all believe, you know, that a particular hypervisor is good or, you know, a particular networking technology or whatever. So basically it's 4,000 people pulling in approximately same, the same direction, but the emphasis really is on approximately. You know, when you get into the nitty gritty, you will find there is debate. Oh, sorry. I really wish this would obey, would obey me. We also have a foundation. It's much like the Apache Foundation. So. You know, we have a, a parent body that looks after stuff like, you know, copyright ownership of the code and running the design summits and mailing lists and paying people to make sure that, you know, our back-end systems are still up. Uh, originally, it was all done by one of the founding organizations for the projects, specifically Rackspace, but that's not perfect for an open source project, right? You want something independent. And it's also like the Apache Foundation in that things don't always make consistent sense, right? Like, it's strange to me that a, a foundation associated with web servers, Apache, has a cloud stack. But fundamentally, their users said, hey man, we need to solve this problem as well. So we're a bit like that too. If someone comes to us and says, well, I really want to solve this thing and I'll only open source it if it can be associated with OpenStack, what's better, to say no and not have the thing at all? Or say, okay, well, we'll be a little bit weird and vague about our, our mission. And there's also the OpenStack bump. Uh, that's my little fist bump thingy I downloaded. Uh, which is that at the moment, for better or for worse, there's a marketing bump associated with being involved with the OpenStack project. So we have a lot of people come to us and say, I want to do this thing because I want the OpenStack logo on it because then you know, money will fall from the sky. And again, if that's the only way we're going to get them to do the thing, then maybe that's good. It's you know, some, sometimes hard to tell, to be completely honest. I really wanted to put an MC Hammer joke here. You know, stop sign with hammer time spray painted under it. And I thought that would be unique and hilarious and never done before until I looked at Google image search and it turns out every man and his dog has one of these pictures. So now I'm making a meta joke about not making the joke instead. <laughs> I think I've lost my way again, basically. Like when I, I, this is not contrived. When I wrote these slides, I actually wrote them in this order. And then I was like, well, I've become what I'm complaining about, right? I'm telling you about numbers and that we have a foundation with a lot of money and it's got a board and, you know, wow, we have trademarks. No one cares, right? What you care about is the problem we're trying to solve. So someone much smarter than me at work put it this way in an email that I've quoted without permission, which is really we should be trying to explain what problem we're trying to solve and specifically at something like a Python event, why a Python programmer would care. So... I think I've done the first bit a little bit, right? We're trying to give you building blocks to build a cloud. Uh, that can be a small cloud or it can be a big cloud, but hey, cloud. Um, but I haven't really explained why a Python person should care. So first off, we're writing a huge amount of open source Python. So, you know, there's a lot of code out there that people can use if they want to. We're also doing it all as open source. So, you know, we have these libraries that might be reusable and useful to you and are probably worth having a look at. We're also hiring a lot of interesting Python people. And I think this is part of the problem, is that you know, occasionally we hire someone's friends, but not them or something. And that can be like awkward, man. But ultimately, you know, we're hiring interesting Python people who might have been trapped in a proprietary organization doing something you'd never seen. 
And we're saying, hey man, do that in public. And that's cool because they're, again, writing code that you can see and you can learn from and you can use. Interestingly, we're also starting to get to the science where we're starting to talk about manipulating the world around us to meet our emotional needs. So we're, we're starting to hire core Python developers and saying, you know, we have this problem, maybe it's performance or something, instead of, you know, uh, changing language or whatever, maybe we can just fix the language. And that benefits everyone. So that's really cool. We're also starting to talk about, you know, hiring core Django developers because our web user interface is in Django. So maybe we'll end up accidentally improving things for everyone, even if you don't care about OpenStack. So I think that's a really interesting you know, direction for us to be taking. But ultimately, I think you should care because having an open source cloud implementation really, really matters. Even if you use Amazon, and I'm happy for you to use Amazon, having competitors keeps everyone honest. So, you know, sure, there's Amazon and there's Google, but there's also a bunch of public clouds running OpenStack. You know, Rackspace, HP, Dreamhost, Aptera, there's a bunch of them. Uh, Anchor is relatively new in Australia. Uh, having alternatives means you're not trapped when you decide you need to move on, and that's really important. The other thing is, it's cool that you can take the same software and run it in your own data center. So let's say you have data you don't want to ship off to an American company or you don't want to have outside your data center. You can run the same software that those people do and have the same facilities, but in your own universe. So maybe if you're doing health data or, or you know, you have data sovereignty concerns or whatever, that might be a thing that you care about. And that's important because you know, we're training a generation of programmers to write apps in this cloudy way. And if you can't run them in-house, then you'd be forced to go and pay Amazon or someone like that to run your apps. So anyway, the, the basic point here is I think this matters because open source cloud is important to providing facilities to people. And so you know, hopefully I've explained what OpenStack is just a little. Um, we have a few minutes for questions if people are interested.